Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.blogspot.com and to another podcast out of the book of Galatians. Today we continue in chapter 3 and we're considering verses 23 and 24. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. Again, that's Galatians 3, 23 and 24. You may hear my oldest son's dog in the background here, and you may even hear our dog. But uh, don't don't pay them any mind. They're just being dogs, and it's okay. In today's text, in today's text we learn... Before this faith came, we were were arrested by the law. We were put into handcuffs, so to speak. And the law functioned like a guardian or like a sheriff's deputy, which was a servant of the family in their culture. responsible for watching over the child. And from his earliest days to his entrance into manhood, literally that's what this guardian or this custodian or this uh, pedagogy is is the word that's used in the Greek. A modern equivalent to the guardian or to this tutor could be a drill instructor at basic military training camp. The drill instructor ensured that the young person would gain control as a result of paying attention and learning his lessons. The law provides direction and self-control. It prescribes the way we should behave. The key there is should, because at the end of the day, we can't do it. And as we've learned, the blessing included the indwelling Holy Spirit. And of course, at the end of the day, that's where our success comes from. This blessing, the Holy Spirit, could not be given to us until certain things took place. And as a result, we couldn't get a new heart, nor... Could we walk in the ways of God consistently? This faith is the mark of maturity, which the law prescribed. And so the law kept Israel, kept us, under restraint until faith came. This faith. When we look at this faith, it's really the faith of the Lord Jesus. We've mentioned before that It's divine persuasion. It's God mingling in our lives, convincing us that he's not only there, but he's worth seeking. The law instructs us on how we are to live a life of faith, but our response has always been rebellion. And so the law functioned to expose our rebellion or our sinfulness. And it played the role of controlling us until the day God began to give us a heart to trust him. I know that sounds like we had no choice in it, and in a very real sense, we were dead in our sins and our trespasses. But we do play a role, make no mistake. You see, if we don't have a heart to trust God and rely on his mercy... The law will be offensive to us and it will harden our hearts further toward God. This is why the law has to break us. It breaks us in order for the grace of God to build us up through the gift of the perfection of Christ. Not our perfection, but His perfection. The perfection of the Lord Jesus. Once we have a heart to trust God and rely on his mercy, then the law will feel like a much needed and desired prescription from a wise and loving father. Once the process has happened, 
we will experience the freedom that we've been offered in Christ and the result will be gratitude and that gratitude will give birth to maturation in our relationship with God where we come to trust him more and more with each passing day that doesn't mean there won't be any dips in the road there always will be for every step we take forward sometimes it seems we take two backwards when this faith comes, we will live a life of freedom and subsequent responsibility. Perhaps if you've seen the movie Shawshank Redemption, you'll know that freedom is one of the central themes in the movie. While it's not obvious that most of us are locked up in some kind of a prison, we all could use more understanding of the fact that God loves us no matter what. Since we are not aware that we are imprisoned, we will not bother trying to escape. Andre Guide once said, To know how to feel oneself, is no, uh, free oneself, is nothing. The arduous thing is to know what to do with one's freedom. And this is one of those main themes in the movie Shawshank Redemption. It's also in the book of Galatians. It's a very applicable quote, that quote from Guide, when we consider the teaching of Paul to the Galatians. There's another figure in Shawshank Redemption from whom we can learn, Brooks Hatlin. He had been at Shawshank Prison for five decades, and he was most secure within the confinements of prison. Then the day came for him to be freed on parole and life on the outside of the predictable and the gray of Shawshank was too much. So in the end, Brooks hangs himself. Brooks is a picture of many Christians, yet the goal of God in our lives is freedom. And this freedom which Christ offers us is so freeing. The freedom is tantamount to being defined by God. And this freedom is the ability to respond to life without having the past or the future interfere in our actions. This freedom provides the unshackling of the incessant voices which tell us we must measure up in some way. I'll close with a quote from Viktor Frankl. Very appropriate for him to give us this quote given our theme for the day. I quote, Between stimulus and response, there is a space, and that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. That's the whole point of the book of Galatians. My friend, I trust these podcasts are helpful to you in your walk with the Lord, these blogs. If I could be of any help to you, feel free to shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.